It's fantastic so good right now. So yeah, I would say so. Why is it good? Well, keep watching the video and you might just find out how I did Challenger with 60% win rate only for like 36 top. Enjoy. I think it's fair to solve the question of who even am I and why am I allowed to make such a video? Well, I'm Capex, I've been playing Philistic Stop for almost a year now, and I have picked up the challenge with it. While never in my life before, by being even getting to Grandmaster, I was just stuck in Master Tier my entire life practically. And even as of recording right now, I am currently Challenger. 754 LP. I also picked Challenger last season, and as you can see, I'm the second highest ranked Vilsk in the, in the world right now. Also, keep in mind I play off meta, I play him in the top lane, not jungle role, and highest in the US, as you guys can see. Therefore, I think I qualify, I think I know what's the best for the champion in the top lane, I think I know the best way and how to play the champion there, so taking therefore, I think I qualify. Before we dive into gameplay, I first want to look at runes and some air spells. I'll also consider 14 point tall first strike changes so in my opinion the best rune or rune setup for like even keystone is airy and the reason behind that is like you might ask me about why i'm not going comet and then well in most of the matchups you want to start with w and if you want to if you start w then you won't be able to proc comet because you're not seizing them you're not slowing them or anything right therefore you go for area. You can also block area with your auto attacks, making it extremely suppressive against champions that wanna, for example, zone you out level one, most like Jax. Then you can just you can just base him with your auto attacks, and of course the Q when he gets too close. So I think Airy is, in my opinion, the best uh, best one you can take. Also, I think from next patch, as I mentioned, 14.12, we wanna take Airy into into every single matchup because like first strike is gonna be so completely useless like overall the inspiration tree ain't even that good domination tree is kind of dead as well as, uh, as of recording this video so pretty much sorcerer and resolve are the two best for fiddle i'm not gonna include conqueror here either because legend haste is blocked currently for fiddle so taking that you're just griefing yourself anyways you go ready continue by mana flow band really really good by the way because if you go mana flow you're not forced to rush mana item as your first as you're gonna have enough mana and then you can go Leandre for example but I will talk about items later on in the video uh, followed by Transcendence and Scorch you combine those you combine air with Scorch and you are extremely oppressive in line into pretty much every single matchup of course some matchups you win some matchups you lose that's how that's just how it goes now second you wanna take Resol it mostly it's gonna be bone plating and revitalize you can swap uh, bone baiting between second wind, depending on who you're playing versus. So keep in mind that. For example, against Rumble, you want to go for second wind because Rumble is a dot champion. He keeps on procking your second wind, therefore you heal more. And then revitalize for the extra healing. Like this rune gives you so much more fighting power early. It's really, really gonna fill. You could even argue that you could go precision second, like presence of mind and cut down. If you're playing against champions that you can't fight level one, or like you're not like you're not even up to level six, for example, that you're only looking to all in, then you can also take presence of mind and cut down as your as your secondary tree. The reason of pres reason you go presence of mind because you have to get more mana. You could also go for um, absorb life. Because I mean you do have mana flow, but this just allows you to be longer in lane. This as well gives you more HP. And the reason for cut down is because uh, you deal more 50 if they're above 50 percent more hp you deal more damage to them right and the way fiddle six works is if they're low enough your w will do more damage to them because it's an executable weapon so what this is gonna help you do is you deal more damage to them so they're f they're gonna be faster on low hp and then your w is gonna deal more more damage as well but this uh, this is like quite rare occasions like it again against champions perhaps like set for example uh, Darius, then you wanna take Precision T, precision T second. With your primary, just um, still going Resolve, Bomb Biting, and Revitalize. Now, when it comes to those things over here, the shards, you wanna go for Ability Haste, Adaptive Force, and Flat 65 HP. The biggest thing behind that is this thing over here gives you a lot of early game fighting potential as your cooldowns are gonna be up way more often. Also, for your ultimate, to be up way sooner than without it you could argue you could even go for like uh, adapt to double adaptive force if you want to rush like malignant first for example because then you don't necessarily need the double taste but yet again i will i'll talk about items when i'm there 
And I mean, I've got the fourth because you just want more damage early. And flat HP because you're, you're gonna be fighting early. So you need more HP. That's pretty much the reason behind it. So the overall setup is this thing over here. This is what I mostly take into, I'd say, like 70% of the matchups over here. Later on in the end of the video, you will also see that I have a matchup spreadsheet, which I'll be talking about as well. As for your summer spells, you want to take flash every single game, and then you have an option between ignite and teleport. I would say take ignite into pretty much matchups that you can snowball, and teleport into tanks and matchups that are quite difficult for you. Now let's talk about items. Well, Every single game, you want to start your classic turns ring with two health potions. And then it, I mean, the back options really depends on how much gold you have. If you have 400, you could go for just an amplifying dome. If you have 700, you could just go for boots with um, amplifying dome, for example. 900 gold, faith dashes. It really depends. Also, if you want to go boots, you only want to go for defensive ones. For example, if they have double AD topside and a bunch of auto attackers in the team, you can go play the steel caps. If they have double AB topside, for example, you can go Mercury threads. Uh, Roads really depends if you're playing against, uh, if you're playing with a build where you need to rush Zonia as your first item, then you go for needlessly large Rod. And if you play Leandris, then you can rush Haunting Guys as your first, uh, as your first, like, let's say back. Or like overall, that's what you want to like buy towards. It doesn't necessarily have to be your first pack. These are just a few of the options. If you want to buy Sork Shoes, that's usually your second item. You don't want to rush them. And then you have your two build paths. You have Leandri into Sork Shoes into Shadow Flame. These are practically your core like core items. And then after that, it's going to be situational items. So I can't really put them here. And then your second build path is Zonia, Sork Shoes. You can buy plated steel caps or mercs instead of them. Really depends on that again who you're, who you're facing. And then follow up by, by Malignant. And the reason I don't go for Blackfire Torch over here is because I think the item is a it I don't know. It it feels so bad. Like you, you get a bit more damage with it, but I feel like just the ultimate haste or like the haste overall you get from this is way more valuable. As if you play this rune setup, you have absolutely zero ability haste. Your ultimate is gonna be way too high cooldown. Way too high cooldown, therefore I think malignancy is better as it gives you 45 um, abilities practically for your ultimate making it really, really strong the old cooldown is gonna go to like around 70 seconds when you have those three items because usually you're above level 11. also keep in mind you do, you go this spell path when you play against certain uh, certain champions like jace for example you're like getting against them riven as well or if you if you play against champions that can like push you away after the ultimate for example like alistair and jana like what you want to do against them you ult you maybe you Q and then you go Zonia. Because Alistair would just ult, get the fear away and throw you away, and then you're practically just useless. You're not gonna deal any damage. And Jenna as well, if you can't one-shot her, you just press Zonia and she can't push you away. Now the situation items. You have quite many choices here. Like you can buy Zonia if you haven't already. For example, the first build buff, Shadow Flame, same thing. You could go Shadow Flame like uh, third uh, fourth item here with the Zonia Rush build. You go white stuff if enemy is hard stacking MR. Usually I prefer Kriplon. But this is only if they're like hard, hard stacking MR. And then Horizon Focus, Focus still, I mean, still a good item. You just can't build it as early. Usually this is your like fourth, fifth item. Uh, you can go Abyssal instead of those two. If your team is heavy AP and nobody's building Abyssal Mask. Usually a tank supports build that, like Alistair, Nautilus, for example. But if nobody ha is able to buy it, then you can buy this for your team. Rylai, you go this against champions when they are mostly, most, mostly melee. If they have like 3 plus melee champions, then this, uh, this already has value. So 3 plus melee champions, you feel free to buy it. Frozen Art, if they have multiple champions that rely on auto attacks and attack speed, just because of the passive. Next up, Morello, if enemies are healing, kind of makes sense. And the most... In most often you're gonna build Banshees because Twisted Fate is meta in the current moment and from Pan Banshees you wanna go with Verdant Barrier first because of the... it gives the spell shield effect, really good item. And then in some games you can even go Imperial Mandate if you're kind of lacking of AP damage. I mean it has really really good stats for fiddle as well. Like 60 AP for abilities, it's quite cheap so definitely a good item to build. And then here is your build is uh, like the first build example where you go for Leandre build buff and this is what I usually buy. Of course, you can swap out, for example, you can go like Zonia, Zonia 5th, Rise of 6th. But usually, when you play Fiddle, you're gonna, your full build is gonna be 4-5 items, like, 
Even, even, yeah, even like four items, you're not usually won't make it a fifth item. And the second build bath is Vizonia. I mean, that again, Shadow Fan Third, Saint of Kuplum, and then Horizon Focus. You're really like, this is usually the build bath you do when. By understanding, of course, you, can, you would swap between between pen and uh, percentage pen and flat pen. Depends on who you're playing versus. Also, don't look at mobile GG for builds. Like, if you want to see what's good or like keep up with my builds, then go to mobile fire. And then I constantly update this. Like, here are the same back options and everything you can do. Just look at here. Usually recommended items because my OPGG usually I usually build the most random things ever possible. So just look at this. I'll leave the I'll I'll leave the little guide uh, into the into the description down below. Now let's get into an actual game plan. What do you do with levels and how do you do play against certain matchups? Now I'm not gonna go into that here because the video would just be too long. It's gonna be on the screen, by the way. You guys need to comment which video is gonna be next. Like, there's gonna be like, uh, how Challenger feels if top, uh, top player thinks of the map, how to dominate easy matchups up to skilled matchups. So it really just depends on what you guys wanna see. I'm gonna be uploading all of them, but in which order, that's up to you guys. So keep in mind, comment, like what do you guys want to see and that's gonna be the next uh statistics guide this is practically like an episode one of it let's get into an actual matchups now the way you play fellow six in season 14 is you need to play for yourself it's a bit different from season 13 as you just you need to get as much gold from laning phase as possible because if you see you just can't roam anymore like ever since the map changes you can't ult from here in the middle of the lane especially if you play against good players so for example they are they're sending here then there is no way you can ult there. The only time you can really ult is if your mid is pushing in, and then you move, you get a prior, you move like this, you go here, you ult, and you double dive. That's the only way you can really roam now. The other way is if you play against a tank, then you can roam, you can roam like this, do Drake, and then TP back to top lane. The matchups can really go in four major ways. You have very easy, you have skilled, which is like mostly in combination of easy and medium matchups then you have the ones that you need to play really aggressively if you want to win you also have a chance to play it safe and then just skill and then matchups that are really really difficult if you go to my matchup spreadsheets by the way then you can find everything here practically it goes from very easy to very hard you want to burn my banatrox and then you can find all the info you need here on how to play certain matchups and they're difficult Difficulty. As you can see, like Camille, Aatrox are really, really hard, for example. Meanwhile, Jax, Malphite, Sion are really, really easy. I'll leave that link in the description as well. Now, what's your like main goal overall? The first few waves. First wave, you don't want to push it. Most of your goal every single time is to do cheater recall. What is a cheater recall, you may ask? It's you slow push the first two waves, you shove the third, so you slowly push it, you slowly push it, shove the third, that's like 10, 20 minions under it. You go here, you recall, you walk back to lane, or you TP. Mostly you walk back to lane though, you save your TP. Now enemy is slow pushing way back into, which is a uh, 4th and 5th wave. Now here you can play fill checkmate, yet again depends on the matchup, usually you can do it, sometimes you can't. Now your opponent has two choices, he either uh, t uh, backs, loses a wave here, and then DPs back, and then he, your opponent can do something. If he doesn't, then this is gonna slow push back into, and then just bounce waves. Until level 6, if she still hasn't recalled, then you can just double dive uh, your opponent. Because even against hard ones such as Camille, you can still get the push in. Probably gonna go W to get those minions. Which means I don't really care about the trade thing. I care about is to fix the wave state, the bounce back, the most important thing. And since my wave is, I have a huge wave here already done. I can already start hitting them. It's down two camps. I even got the cannon. Okay, good. And I get to go reset here now. And it's quite low and low as well.
And the is good for me now. Perfect. Now it's gonna slow push into him. Gonna push all the way in again. I mean, he can fight me here on this plan here. That's gonna slow push into me. I get another reset here. And she has not been able to reset once yet. I can double dive her here. You get a prior in most of the matchups. The only time you can't get it is if you play somebody that has CC level 1 and is, in is incredibly strong. Like Olaf, for example, Darius said you can't get prior against him no matter what. So then they just push into you and then it's gonna bounce back. It's gonna be really hard. You might die here, by the way. But as long as you get your way fixed, that's good. That's pretty much it. You just try to get income, you get strong, and then in mid game you start doing your stuff. Because, I mean, that's where Fiddlestick shines the most. It's mid game. If let's say you play Ignite now, your opponent fights to level one, you win it. I mean, let's say Gwen in the sense, that, right? You fight level one, but she's like 30 30% HP left. Then yet again, you can still slow push. Uh, shout the third. You have like level advantage on her practically because you get you get level three on the third wave when you kill the first two melee minions if you got XP from every single one. Then she's mostly here, you Q her, W, uh, uh, Q, E, W, kill her. You're most likely gonna die as well, but she loses those minions, and it's a faster recon, and you can just wall back to lane as well. Now, that's pretty much what you do. Like, it, as I told you, this is gonna be a quick one. I'm gonna go into depth in the, as I mentioned at the beginning of how to play lane. Now, this was laning phase. Let's go after the, what to do after laning phase. So, mostly, it's gonna look like this. You have your bot lane. In mid lane with support, you have your uh, mid lane on side lane, and jungle is just doesn't really matter what it is. Now, what you do this, you can be bot lane as well, you can be top, doesn't really matter. It really depends on what objective is up. Now, you, what you want to do is you just fix the wave. Let's say the wave is pushing into you, it's coming like this. What you want to do is you push the wave in until like it's until it's around like uh, around here, right? You do it until it's around here. So you do that. And then you just go back to mid lane. You just stay here, you stay here, somewhere around them so they wouldn't get dove. If enemies over, if enemies step up, boom, you can ult. I mean, depending on which side they play, you can ult, you can kill them. If they don't, nothing happens, you just go back to top lane. And then you fix the ways again. Now, if an objective is coming up, you wanna, let's say it's 130 uh, or two minutes before an objective, objective, you wanna fix the wave yet again. You want the wave to slow push into your opponent, so they are forced to answer it. Now, that gives you an opportunity. After that, your opponent is forced to come top line. And then with your team, you can get con you can get control of the objective. Because Fiddlesticks wants to be first on the, on the objective. If you're first, your opponents cannot enter. It's like, mostly, I stay right here. I stay here or here. If I, I mean, this instance I'm playing from blue side, right? Applies to red right side as well, by the way. You can do the exact same thing from right side. You stay in one of those bushes. Because like this way, you have access to mid lane, you have access to here, you have access to here. Now, if they come from bot, if they go from, if they come from here, what I'm showing right now, then you could be in the pit, you could be over here and loot here. That's what I mostly do. Or I just go around, I go around like this, and then I will tear. Same thing applies to right side. Now, let's go to team fighting. Now, let's again, let's say you did, you did everything you had to do. There's a team fight now. Everybody's here, it's a 5v5, right? Now, how do you team fight with Fiddlesticks? I mean, it, sound, it might sound easy, you just ulted them, right? You ulted them, but it's actually a bit more complicated than that. You need to know who to ult, what is your goal in a team fight, right? What do you need to do? What is your job? Now, if you want to play front to back, front to back means you want to kill melee champions first, and then you kill back, yeah, you kill back line. Or let's say you need to peel for a really carry, you just play front to back, you ult the front line, and let's say you have an assassin who can kill backline, right? That's one way. If you want, if you need to ult on backline, let's say they have two to three range champions, you ult on backline, then that's your job. Now, a target priority is really, really important as well. Because I mean, you know, like, you know, comic comics, but you, are, you have ult, you have AOE ultimate, you don't need target priority. Then that's completely wrong, by the way. You need target priority because your, your Q does current HP damage. If you have like three to four items, your Q does like approximately 40 to 45% of their current HP, which is practically, uh, let's say, an AD carry has 2000 HP, it does like 900 damage from their HP, which is huge, by the way, because that means your double is gonna get more damage as well. So, target priority is really, really, really important. Also, target priority means who you're gonna ult as well, which I just talked about. It really depends if you wanna ult the front line or you wanna ult the back line. 
Okay, some tips for early game. So, as we talked previously, you wanna slow push and get a shit recall, right? Mostly your jungler is gonna start topside, so you're not gonna depend on him. You wanna, you can all, you're only gonna depend on yourself. That's fair. Play for yourself. Play for yourself. Yet again. I keep reminding you that. Now, what most enemy jungle do is gonna back bottom lane as well. Be careful of level 3 gank. So, uh, red buff, uh, raptors, krugs, or raptors, red, krugs, this. Now, how do you avoid a level 3 gank? So, what you can do is, if you if you slow push the first two waves, you can quickly, you can go here and place a refugee here as a ward. Now, if you can't do that, that is another way of knowing. There are certain timers in the game, like 2.30. If the timer has reached uh, 2 minutes 30 seconds, that means your opponent is gonna be here. Enemy jungler is around here. Now, if they start the bot side, you also know 2.30, okay, I know, enemy jungler is right, it's somewhere around here. It could be like 2.26 and they're like around here, it really depends on who you're playing, but mostly 2.30 is where enemy jungler is gonna be between those two towers. Now, next timer that is really important is 4.15. 4.15, if enemy jungler full clears, he's gonna be where he started. So, what do you mean by that? If enemy jungler starts bottom side of the map, right? Bottom side of the map. That means when the timer hits 4.15, he hasn't ganked anyone and he's gonna go for another full clear. That means at 4.15, he's gonna be right here again. Because the frog is gonna respawn and then you know that he's gonna bath towards top line again. Most, most, most likely. Also, next timer is around 6.50. 6.50, you know, that enemy is gonna be here again. If you know that tempo, you know where your opponent, where the enemy jungle is gonna be most of the times. So keep in mind, 2.30, 4.15, 6.50. Really, really important. Also, what I like to do is uh, if enemy, if let's say you're playing, uh, you're playing red side, right? You are red side in this case. If you know enemy jung enemy support is champions like uh, Nautilus, Rel, who can invade your level one, then what I like to do is put an effigy here and stand around uh, around here another tip you can use your ultimate to break enemy freezes if they're freezing another tip you can use is use your bushes especially if after level 6 you just walk into them even if you don't have any attention to ultimate out from there you're gonna make your opponent scared that means they're gonna walk away and if you need to last it walk out of the bush that is really important if you're in a bush if you're in a bush walk out last it the minion and then walk back in that's really important because um, because like if you were out of the from bush, that's gonna show you still around like two to three seconds when you're in the bush. It's better to just walk out of the bush last and then it will walk back into the bush. If you're facing your opponents, feel free to cancel, cancel your W. That's one of the skill expressions that you're gonna get with it. You need to know when to cancel your W. A really good example being is like you're using your W to deal damage to Rumble, right? Now, what do you know about Rumble matchup? Yet again, if you go to my matchups guide, you know how to play against them. Knowing that, okay. I have to use my Q on Rumble's red farm, so when he overheats. Okay, I start using W, I see Rumble is all in me. Okay, it's gonna get red farm, and then I just Q and run away. Even if you're in the middle of your W, you need to you need to cancel it to use your Q, otherwise you're gonna die, because it, it, it deals a lot of damage. So pretty much, cancel your W whenever your opponent is using a highly dangerous ability on you. When it comes to last sitting under the tower, then this is how you do it. Melee minions take two tower shots plus not attack. So that's quite simple. Now, range creeps are a bit more complicated though. You need to out attack them, wait for the tower shot to go through, kill it with W, and then cancel your W. Now, every single other range creep is gonna die from tower shot plus auto attack. It seems like we have reached the end of this video though, but as I talked about it in the video, don't worry, this is just the beginning. There's like four or five more videos coming about fiddlesticks and you could call them guides as well and as i talked about make sure to comment and like what do you want to see next until then thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next one peace